episode seven of the podcast series with Mr. Phil Walter and his epic adventures in Antarctica during the 1976-77 season? Correct. Right. So, um, you've been talking a lot about um, the uh, your work there, um, getting magnetic readings from around the region. And also, um, I think I heard you talking about um, a visit to the Russians. Sounds really mm. James Bondy. <laughs> so let's get started and talk about those sort of things, because I think you wanted right. to chat about them. Okay, then. Yeah. We did do uh, survey work in the summer. Yeah. I was lucky to be the only winterer to be directly involved in the summer survey work. So yeah. that's just dots around the place? All yeah, over so the... going all over the, the area called Enderby Land, uh, doing spot magnetic uh, survey work. Were they also, preset locations, or you just sort of say, "Oh, we'll do it here." There were some locations that we would go to to repeat measurements. This is to get the what we call the secular variation: is how much did the magnetic field change from the last time someone was there? Yep. Also, did as many new locations as we could possibly get, so you could start to form an overall picture of what is the Earth's magnetic field doing in three components all around Enderby Land. So why is it called Enderby Land? Is there a reason for that? Or is oh, there I don't of... know. I can't remember. Because there's all sorts of moored... Yeah, moored land. Moored that was land. where Mawson was. That's right. There's the uh, other one, Ross, the Ross Sea. Yeah, and... all those. Yeah. It goes back to historic times, early yeah. 1900s. So that was your main principal job in the, in the summertime? That's right. And so how did you get around? Did you just get on the plane or did you just get in the dogs? Choppers. Or you... Choppers. Choppers was my main form of transport occasionally or in the fixed wing Pilatus port. Yeah. Mostly That's choppers. That's a slow one, isn't it? That the no, one looks it looks like actually, it floats in the air like this. The choppers, the choppers would cruise at around ninety knots. Pilatus Porter generally cruise around one hundred and ten, yeah. so a little bit faster. Yeah, but just when you see them landing, it's quite an extraordinary oh. thing to see them. They're literally like they're hovering because they come slowly in, and they're they're, yeah. they're still airborne. If they're coming in to a reason, reasonable headwind, they just about land vertically. Yeah, yeah, they're quite amazing, yeah. and that's why they use them down there. Mm. So, we're talking about the Russian base. To the Russian base. What's it called again? It is called... I didn't mention it before. Oh, sorry, you didn't... Well, I've yeah. read the notes, you know. <laughs> yeah. I cheated. Sorry. Mola Desnia. Mola Desnia. Mola Desnia. It sounds like something out of James Bond. We're it going to been. Mola Desnia. It could have been in James Bond, I don't know. Mm. Yeah. So, how far away is it, was it from your base? Oh, it's quite a few hundred... I don't know, it might have been four or five hundred kilometres. Okay, reasonable distance. Reasonable distance. Uh, it was on the far western side of Australian Antarctic territory. Okay, so let's, let's go from, we're, we're under okay. Madagascar and we're going towards South Africa. So I, I have to check on the map, but Mola Desney would be under Africa. So why, why would a bunch of scruffy Aussies be invited to the Russians in the time of the Cold War under, is it Brezhnev? It was Leonard Under Brezhnev. Brezhnev. You're right, the Cold War was at its height. Yep. Uh, but in the Antarctic, everything was different. Okay. Uh, there was a tradition where the Australians would, mm -hmm. whenever they could, visit Molodesnia and vice versa. So, so the they Russians had... didn't come during your year? No, not this time. Okay, right, right. So it's an alternate thing. Yes. They had actually visited... Oh, I don't know, about five years before, something like that, and crashed a plane. Ooh. One wheel went down a crevice, yeah. wingtip clipped Clip. the snow, yeah. and that plane had still, still was just left, uh, had to be abandoned. <laughs> and the Aussies the... had to fly them back. <laughs> <laughs> now, the funny thing is, like I said, there must be a lot of junk in Antarctica. Probably. You yeah. know, when you think about it, there's crashed planes, there's, there's stuff left from previous bases all over the place. There's um, supply dumps dotted around the place. Now, whether they've been cleaned up since those days, Well, that's what I, I was just thinking, know. you know. Don't now, we're, know. now we're all more yeah. environmentally conscious. You get any, is it like a formal invitation or is it like, oh, it's our turn to go to you guys? I think there was a formal invitation. Yeah. Uh, in, in a telegram. You are invited to the Russian... Yes, well, they knew we would, that particular year, we were doing Enderby Land and there in Enderby Land, right on the far western edge of it. Mm -hmm. So they said, right, come over and visit us. So do they, does it, is it is a visit in terms of, okay, visit, but do you want, do you um, share information that you've collected? They already had my data. I did go over there to collect certain types of data uh, from them, monthly and yearly magnetic mean values. Okay. A little less 
um, James Bondish. Well, you know, you never know. Uh, so there was there was a, a good, a reasonably, you know, a, re a regular relationship with with the Russian base um, on a, on a, on a regular basis. Oh you? yes, yes, through the year with them and other bases, we've she freely words freely mm. shared information. There was no problem. Communications weren't as sophisticated as they are nowadays. Back in those days, you didn't send them a fax, did you? Or did they have faxes? No. They did have faxes. Did they? Oh god! But faxes were fairly new. Mm. We did mostly used telegrams, telexes. Yeah. So it's and just Morse code and you know, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I suppose that's the other thing about when you talk about. It, there's a lot of bases on Antarctica. Surely there'd be an issue with communication in terms of language issues. Now, yeah. language issues. It wasn't my problem. It was the radio operator's problem. Yeah. But there must be some sort of common language, like I suppose if you say Morse, but you know Morse would be done in English. In That's that right. Sense, yeah. <coughs> we use spoke in English and they speak could English, you stupid yeah. uh, Russians. You know. Although the Russians weren't, <laughs> at least that the year we were there, there there was only a bit of smattering of textbook English. Mm. If you sent them a telegram in English, they could they could uh, figure out what it meant. So you get the invite. Now, what what time of the year was it again? You said it was. Uh, was it? February? February? I think it was February so that's 1977. Seven, so, that, so you're literally about to leave in the next month or so. Yes. So you're, this is like the big party at the end of the school year. No, no, that was yet to come. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> Having said that, so, uh, we'll get on to a party, a Mola Disney party in a minute. How many people were, were brought over? Was it just like a big expedition to go and visit the base? Only a small number. Only well, about seven or eight. Including oh, that's right, because you've only got choppers and a pilot as porters, which yes. is like a six-seater or something like that, isn't it? Six or seven, eight-seater. Right. Because the, the image you get when you're reading is this, this uh, um, flying operation with two helicopters and a, and a plane, you know, something out of um, Apocalypse Now, you know. Da, 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 da. It's hard you know, to get Apocalypse Now when you're in Hughes 500s. We used well, to they're call pretty it. fast. They're fast. We used to call them angry ants. Yeah. <laughs> you could see them flying towards this Russian base with this, the <laughs> snow flying up. You... Well, actually, it wasn't snow flying up. It was clouds of dust. And that brings me on to a point with Molodesnia. At Mawson, there was no dust. Not a, blunt, not a single grain of dust at mm. Mawson because the wind just blew all that away. It never accumulated. Mm. Molodesnia was in a much more sheltered part of the coast. So it's more settled more settled, the dirt and stuff didn't blow away and it was a really dusty area. Mm. So you had a nicer climate, but you put it up with a lot of dust as well. And when we, you imagine three choppers landing, what happened? Yeah, that's what I said. Well, three <laughs> choppers, and, is it three choppers and a pilot that's put us or yeah, two choppers? it was three choppers. And so the, that's the whole air contingent, your whole trip. Yes. So yes. everybody, we're, let's go to the Russian base. We know they've got good vodka there. <laughs> so it's like, but um, you said it was like 500 kilometres away. Approximately. Something like that. So did you have to have a, 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 a stop to refuel or what could you do? Well, that? we didn't go from Mawson. Oh. We went from Mount King, which is probably two thirds of the way towards Molodesnia. That's where our summer survey Oh, so you had a base, based. you based yourself out there. A temporary base. Okay. So yeah. when, you, when you say it's a typical Aussie temporary base, like a couple of tents, you know, well, no real mod cons, nothing. Yeah, there was no, no real mod cons. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, you know, fuel dump for the choppers. Yeah, Refilled them there, and then yeah, and then yeah, off. Was, yeah, because I mean the Aussies. To be fair, the Aussies did it pretty rough. They were pretty rough. We were a tough lot. I know, tough, <laughs> tough, rough, and pretty yeah. basic. You know, they're basic. Yeah. If you had a major accident there, you'd be in a lot of trouble. You're just well, lucky a lot of the time. You'd be flying them back to Mawson to yeah. tend to that sort of thing. Fortunately, that never happened. Because you don't really, you just have a, a, an aid post, or you don't really have a hospital at Mawson. You have some sort of... We had a surgery there. Surgery. Oh, yeah. so somebody could... Oh, that's why the vet can do the surgery. Yeah. <laughs> there was no vet there. No, <laughs> we, did, we, we had... A, every year has to have a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. If you... No doctor, there's no survey. February... So it's starting to get a bit warmer. It's yes. summertime, midsummer. Oh, so you're off to the Russians. We're off to the Russians. Do you, do you have to sort of clear, you know, the tower? You know, they're coming into their base. They go, oh, no. They were pretty excited that we were coming. You imagine you've been there... All you know is the people on your base and then new people are coming out. It was a big deal. It was a big deal. Yeah. And I remember as we were flying out and looking down, I said, geez, those buildings look big. Mm. Of a different scale to ours. Yeah. And of course, when you land, you say, yes, they're big. They're very big. It's a base, but it's like, what, how much bigger than yours? Oh, I reckon it have to be five times the size of but ours. But five times as big. Yeah. Five times more people there. So I'll so give you an example. 
I was the geophysicist at Mawson. Yeah. I was sort of got to know the chief geophysicist at Mullodesnia, who was in charge of 11 other geophysicists oh, wow. and their support staff. So that's a huge yeah. operation. Exactly. I mean, that's a good, good team. Yes. Like you said, they take it much more seriously in that sense. They're there yeah. for a long time. They've got a very substantial base. Is that their only base? No, there were other bases. But smaller around. ones. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know if they were smaller or, or what. Yeah. But they, this, probably in those times, I think this would have been their biggest, but don't quote me on that. But they had a port as well. They had a, 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 a jetty or something like that to bring in their ships. A proper harbour. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, that's like, they're on, like Mawson, they're on a rocky outcrop. Yeah. Yeah, so they, they just, didn't didn't get buried they didn't by get the buried. snowfall. Yeah, yeah. Their, their outcrop they were on was bigger than ours. Yeah, but it would have been easy to get shipping in because it was tended to be a, a little bit warmer in that area. So okay, you would so probably get slightly longer period of of, free, of, uh, ice of free. water, ice free water. Yeah, not completely free of ice. And, and as you said before, the Russians, that is almost their native environment. Yes. They knew how to set themselves up. In yeah. those sorts of climates, yeah. and they did it well. Yeah, and I suppose when you've got a, a communist system, the money is not an expense, is not an issue. So you do a good job from the beginning. Yeah, they I mean, did a good job. Yeah, and even to the extent of their food. I tell you what they do for their food. Ask me what they, they eat they it. Do. Oh, what do they do for their food, Phil? <laughs> they grow it down there. A what? Yes. Really? Wow. So that's, what do they have? A greenhouses or something? They didn't use greenhouses, they might nowadays. Yeah. What they did was they had large window sills on in this side of their buildings mm -hmm. on the sunny side, which is north side. Yeah. Yeah. And they fill it with these large sills with soil, ironically imported from Australia. <laughs> so you got Australian soil growing Russian tomatoes. Exactly. And they just grow they planted gardens and had fresh food all year round. Fresh you Fruit and veggies. Yeah, so I mean, I think something like that is 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 a multiple thing. The actual tending to the garden is great therapy, and growing your own food is great for your you know physicality. So you're not eating dried food the whole time. So yeah. that's a real win-win-win, isn't it? And it and was. it's using what you've got in a very sustainable way, I suppose. Yeah, this begs an obvious question. I'm... What's the obvious question? Is why didn't the Aussies do it? That's <laughs> because the obvious they're a question. bunch of tin tacks. <laughs> That's where you see that contrast when you talked about it. It's like the Russians went there for the long term. It was a long running, a big base with lots of people to make a real community there. Yeah. I suppose, would there have been women down there as well? Because you know, the Russians any... had very, they didn't, they're quite liberal with that sort of thing. Yeah, I didn't see any women. I, probably not back then. I'm sure they have, they have them now. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, things have changed. But yeah. they made a base like it should be. Your base looks a bit... Tatty. Yeah, well, don't forget Mawson was the very first Australian Antarctic base. If you look at it now, uh, how Mawson is now, it's a lot different. There's not many buildings that we had still up nowadays. It's a bit, bit better. better. Yeah, and they've also got yeah. um, wind turbines as well, you know, apparently. Yeah. But I don't understand how you get a wind turbine down there where when you get the big blizzards, you must be able to switch it off and You'd have, to have, have I a don't very know. clever yeah. way to collapse it up. You'd have to have something like that. Yeah. Because if you left a wind turbines up there in a yeah, blizzard, it'd be bang it, straight yeah. away. Okay, so you've got three helicopters, a pilotless porters, surging through the the Arctic, Antarctic um, wastelands with um, dust flying behind and coming into land at the Russian base. Well, would you have to have done a political? Um... No. Okay, because you're scientists. You don't need to be indoctrinated into the Western system to be not to be um, seduced by the Russians. Don't be concerned the least bit about those sorts of things. Good. And it was a lot better that particular year. Yeah, politics wasn't an issue at that base. Yeah. Now some years it would the uh, Molodesnia was headed, Molly. Molly, if you like. Molly. We're Aussies, mate. We call it Molly. Yep. Some years, Molly Desnia. Yep. Had a commissar. Leading. Is that, that's a political leader, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, yeah. And those years were miserable. Yeah, because they stuck to the letter, you will not do yeah. this, and those strong accents. Like. Yeah. But this year, it was much different. They had the ultimate leaders, Q, tinkle, 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 fairy dust, a scientist. Oh, a scientist. Now, what was his name? 
Aha! Oh, I knew I'd catch him out. Yeah, Mr. Nostrovic Bresnivigos. <laughs> No, but I mean, so, so what was what, what was his specialty? Did you know that sort of thing? No, I wouldn't know that. Okay, either. so he was he was an administrative, but he was a scientist, came yes. rather than from a political background. That's right, not a political background. Hence, Molodesnia that year was a lot nicer place to yeah. be. It's a funny thing, isn't it? You know, sort of when you get to know real the people themselves, it's a great environment. Everybody's friendly, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But as soon as you step away and the politics come in, then the walls come up yeah. and you know, it's it's a game of yeah. cat and mouse. The Russians are very hospitable people. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. And boy, did they show us some hospitality. So you you landed un, under your kit. They sort of show you some accommodation and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so how, sorry, how long were you there for? How long were you supposed to be there for? Uh, I think we were there, arrived one day, full next day and flew out the third day. Okay. Yes, so you get you get set up. Is it the accommodation so good? Is it better than your Yeah, or... Well, it was great big rooms, yeah. uh, and we, we all bunked into the same room. Yeah, uh, and I can't remember what we slept on. They gave us temporary beds or something. Yeah, so they, they had it was fine. They had extra accommodation to to handle yeah. people. They had some. Up. They had plenty of room there. Yeah. Then we were treated to get this a sauna and a spa. A sauna. I mean, we were used to having to ration ration water mm. right through the winter. Which is kind of bizarre. Yeah. When you're surrounded by the biggest freshwater concentration in the on the yep. globe. That's exactly right. Yeah. But that's another story how we got our water. Well, I know. Did, yeah. I think we covered that once. Anyway, yeah. uh, so the Russians. Water, they had plenty of water. Plenty of water. Uh, They'd solved yeah. the problem quite successfully. Yes. Obviously. They probably had nuclear reactors. They, they were they would there pour, squirt water over you and. They had their fronds that they'd slap you with, yeah, palm fronds or whatever what? they were. Yeah, I tell you, in the feet of sauna. This is this is all like a torture. Antarctic. We're being tortured by his fronds. Yeah, they were whipping us with. Anyway, it must be yeah. funny to have feel feel that warmth. It was all you know, really, when you've been yeah. loose to the cold. You forgot what continent you're on when you're down there. Yeah, yeah. Now to make matters worse for me, because I was a winterer, I was very conditioned to cold weather. But uh, they forgot to offer us any liquid. Oh, I was past dry. It's a funny thing, isn't it? You don't yeah. think you would be, but it, like you said, it's a very dry climate. Very dry. I was hot, sweaty, and very, very thirsty. Yeah, you'd be dehydrated yeah. like something out of the planet. So did they say, what do you say, what, what's, what's, what's Russian for water? Vodka, no. <laughs> I think it yeah. could have been, actually. That brings, that's another story which we'll come, we'll come to about now, perhaps. Okay, so, so you're absolutely... Sweating like a pig, you've been whack with fronds, yeah, and you're sitting there. I need someone exactly. Yeah. You couldn't even eat snow because there wasn't any around the base. Oh, because it's on a con it's on a not it's on a a, a rocky outcrop, yeah, a rocky crop, yeah, yeah. Now, what we would you have done that? We'd just walk out and grab some snow. Oh, thank god for that. I would have done when I was so thirsty then, huh? yeah. If there had been some snow around, I would have done exactly that, mm. anyway. We did inspection. I got the data that I wanted off from the magnetic uh, setup. All the mean monthly figures. Is that in a piece figures. of paper? Like yeah, no, I just wrote it all down. Okay. Copied you it. Don't just like get a USB and yeah. stick it in there and go, yeah, thanks, yeah. mate. I should have done my own magnetic readings, but I was having too good a time to be bothered with well, that. I mean, it's literally <laughs> a, a weekend away from yeah. your main work, and it's, you know, it's, it's re rest and relaxation. You had a sauna. Oh, what? <laughs> I mean, was there any idea, any thoughts of, of bringing that sort of idea to your base? Because you could see well, the health benefits of sauna and growing food. You know, I know you not, said you had a hydroponics sort of setup. We did that. But that was just for the week. That was Mickey Mouse stuff. No saunas. You, water not Australia, water supply it? was an issue. Yeah. But there's no reason we couldn't have done that garden bit. Maybe not because we didn't have as big a windows as what they had. Mm. The gardens would have been smaller, but it still would have worked. I mean, there's sort of things you just pick that and go, why? It's just so yeah. logical. So you got off the plane, checked out your bedroom, and then they said, come and join the sauna. Is that sort of sequence, or is that like the next day? No, no, that was probably a sequence, something like that. Okay. And then, you, then, then after the sauna, you just kept going and did kept it. Kept going. Yeah. yeah. They showed us. They took us a tour of their missile launch site. What? Yeah. 